In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think some of the bravest people are people who try to do stand-up comedy. Especially when they're first starting out. They have to go to clubs where they're not well-known and where the crowd can be um, difficult because they're expecting to be entertained. They all have their own, their own sense of humor. And at times, I think people who frequent these kinds of comedy clubs aren't too shy about heckling or letting the performers know that, that they don't like they don't like their stuff. And so there are, <laughs> there are comedians with real horror stories about bad crowd reactions or numbers that, um, that didn't go over well. And so it's, it's, a, it's kind of a harrowing thing that you prepare this, uh, this skit or this number to make people laugh and you go up there all by yourself on the stage and you present this thing and you don't get the reaction that you expected you get um, rejected by the crowd instead. So unless, you're, unless you really have a, a great attitude, there's one comedian I know of who says he likes when this happens because he thinks uh, comedy is, is basically, um, comedy consists of things that are unexpected. And he says when he tells a joke, he expects people to laugh. And when they don't laugh, he finds that funny. <laughs> In any event, um, so unless you have that kind of really uh, st- strong attitude about your own uh, situation, it's difficult. And Jesus, Jesus in today's gospel, speaks of something similar and something that's even more harrowing, namely being a prophet. Being a prophet, being someone who has to challenge sinners, challenge people with God's judgment, with God's view of things is, is dangerous and is scary because people don't usually react well. Jesus says in today's gospel, the men of Nineveh will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it for they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. Jesus here is comparing himself and his message. And he's the prophet of all prophets. He is, he's not just a prophet. He is the son of God himself who's come to speak to us, to call us repentant, to repentance, to call us to conversion. And we don't react. And the men of Nineveh in the Old Testament did react to the, to the preaching of Jonah. They had the reaction that God wanted them to have through Jonah. And so it's very clear that Jesus is, is disappointed in this lack of reaction to his message. And Jesus is hurt by this lack of reaction to his message. In another passage, Jesus talks about being like a mother hen who wants to gather her chicks under her wings. And he says, but you would not. He's weeping over Jerusalem. And he says, how many times I would have gathered you like a hen who gathers her chicks under her wing, but you would not. And so there's there's this kind of note of of sorrow, of disappointment, of sadness in in Jesus' tone because he has been rejected. His message has been rejected. And so we all do this. We all, Lord, have rejected your message in some way, perhaps for great periods of our lives, perhaps right now, at least in some respect, we're not accepting we're not accepting God's message and Lent is an awesome time to return to him return to him with our whole heart as we read on Ash Wednesday return to me with your whole heart with mourning and fasting and weeping and weeping tears of joy it's good to return to God it's good to respond to respond to Jesus' message of salvation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen